<laughs> we spoke last week about uh, fuel and how the, with the global production has kind of peaked and obviously the demand on the, f on the fuel resources that currently exist are stretching things to the limit. With India and China, two of the world's largest population centres now discovering the motor car and developing a ravenous appetite for these vehicles of propulsion, where's all the fuel going to come from to discuss this and more related issues we have with us from the, the MTA CEO, Mr Peter Fitzpatrick. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Enough of the old guests. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Right I know on you there, boy. Just because you got your smart suit on, you can't <laughs> cheeky. Quite flash, don't I? <laughs> what about Anita? I was wondering if Anita was going to get uh, some legal action from Cadbury. No, I think that's... Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at as Doc as Purple. Doc, Doc is Purple. Oh, no. Yes. I'm an Eagles supporter. Well, there you go. You didn't even think of that, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. So, Peter, the Chinese and the Indians really, really, really like the idea of owning some cars. What sort of numbers are we talking here? Because it's a ridiculous explosion in manufacture alone, isn't it? Well, I think it was interesting. Last week we, we were talking about how the US is just you know, massively importing oil. But there's the other side of the coin. So what you've really got here is the sort of two global petro cops sort of on the beat, mainly China and the US, who are out for every drop of oil they can get. And now India and China are sort of merging forces and doing some joint ventures together. So the other side of the coin is these two major emerging superpowers are going to be the ones that will drive the, uh, the oil debate over the next, uh, the next 50 to 100 years. So you've got to remember that up until about 1750, China and India were constituted about 50% of the world's gross uh, product, gross domestic mm -hmm. product. So it's only with the uh, uh, Europe and the Industrial Revolution where they got sort of squeezed out of that. Now, by the end of this century, they'll be back there again. Mm. So the demand for oil is going to be huge. At the moment, China uh, imports uh, about 45% of its oil. That's about 10 million barrels a day. We you put that in perspective, a day. Where it's, is that uh, from, though? Well, Where that, are they uh, getting it from? Well, that, that comes uh, from a, a range of, uh, of countries. It comes from Iran, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Uh, they've got uh, oil treaties and uh, oil agreements with places like Sudan, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, Burma, uh, a lot of countries in Africa, they've signed up with oil treaties. So, th and that 10 uh, million barrels a day represents about, uh, well, one eighth of the world's actual usage. So it's a fairly big... I imagine chunk. that percentage will be growing rapidly and will, will continue to do so. Well, you asked about manufacturing, you know, I think... Uh, Last year we talked about uh, China manufacturing motor vehicles. Uh, when we sort of looked at China setting up its manufacturing, we thought by now they'd be manufacturing about 4 million vehicles a year. They hit 8.5 last year and they're heading to 20 million vehicles a year by 2015. So it's a massive market there that they have to satisfy with internal combustion engines. That's if they don't choke on their own fumes first, of course. Yeah, I was going to say, are they um, sort of environmental friendly or environmentally friendly cars, like green cars, no. or no? Okay. Short answer is no at the moment. And if there is going to be an electric mm. car mass produced, I think China's the one that's going to have mm. to produce it. Because yeah. to run the Olympics there in a few months' time, they're shutting down the whole of industry and taking over a million cars off the road around Beijing just so that they can breathe the air. Oh, you know, the, otherwise, you'd see these global pictures of uh, marathon runners sort of gasping for, for breath amongst all the smog. So, and I know the, the OPEC countries aren't necessarily front runners when it comes to efficient vehicles. I mean, when you're selling fuel, sure. you haven't really got a vested interest. But that, they seem to be the only global player with the power to maybe put some constraint on mm. India and China. Yes. Yeah. Well, see, the other thing too, you've got to remember that, uh, that, that India is growing. India is about 15% of the world population, mm. only 5% of the world's oil at the moment. But uh, that, that's rapidly increasing. In fact, India is the largest and, oh, sorry, the fastest growing car market in the world. It's, uh, it's growing faster than China, but China's obviously got the sheer numbers. India's, uh, and where the tricky bits come is India and China have both linked up with Iran. So you've got Iran on the one side, Iraq on the other. The US is in Iraq and there has problems with the nuclear programs and other problems going on with the administration in Iran. You've got China and India lined up with Iran. So the potential for conflict over oil mm -hmm. and foreign policy is quite extreme and oil will drive a lot of the foreign policy. Do they not see this ahead of time? Like, Can they not see the damage that they could potentially be doing? Well, there's, is it just I think one of the interesting things that, is that, it, is that well, it comes back to, to resources. If you're going to grow an economy like China is at the moment and India is planning to do, uh, or started to do, then you need lots of energy. Mm. Now, India fortunately recently has found a lot of oil 
in the Bay of Bengal, sorry, gas in the Bay of Bengal and a bit of oil, mainly gas. So that's going to help them out a fair bit, but they're still going to need masses and masses of oil. Mm. So you've got these, you know, sort of massive mm. sort of power setting off against one another. Here's Australia sitting in the middle, 84% self-reliant in oil at the moment, mm. but heading to 20% self-reliant within 15 years. So we're going to enter a market right at the time where all the oil resources are really tied up mm. by these major powers. And I guess the only thing that stops China and the United States from being at one another's throats permanently is <coughs> China needs US as a market for all its manufactured goods. And the Americans need all the US dollars that the Chinese have got to fund their deficit. So they sort of, they're, they're a bit like a warring couple, you know, they really don't get on all that well with one another, but they need they one another. The overall feeling I'm getting, Peter, is it adds uh, credence or power to the message we had yesterday, which was, you know, the, gl the global oil suppliers are running out. And this could be a reason why America went into Iraq. Well, it's, oh, it's, it's absolutely the reason why they went in there. It's the second largest oil field in the world and only about 20% of it's fully tapped. So there's, there's no doubt in my mind uh, weapons of mass destruction and all the other reasons that were given had nothing to do with the real issue. The real mm -hmm. issue was oil and the US needs that oil. Peter, we need to have a good read of your trade talk regarding China and India so that we've got a full bottle on it. Where can people find that one? They'll find it on the MTA website if they click under media and they'll find all the trade talk columns there. Fantastic. Right. Well, uh, I think there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of issues going on there. A lot, yeah. So not only obviously the manufacturing of all the vehicles, that in itself produces greenhouse gases in the yeah. manufacturing process, yeah. substandard vehicles pumping out more emissions into the air yep. and a massive, massive population gr consuming a lot of fuel. Well, I was just thinking about where, where we could be in 20, 30 years time is just scary. That report I've just been confirmed will be on our website later on today as well so you can go to wakeupwa.com.au maybe leave a little note how much are you concerned about the future of our oil supplies and should we start making LPG gas cars now? Thank I know you, I've been Jason. pushing that barrel for quite a while but when it just bubbles out of the water up north it sort of seems sensible to do so. <laughs> Pete, thanks for coming in and opening our yes, eyes once yeah. again to what's going on in the world of motoring. My pleasure. I hope we're not too gloomy today but I think we would need a reality check on these things and we, we are running out of oil and it's going to be in great demand in the, the yeah. years ahead. Yeah, we Definitely. do need to start thinking on a global <coughs> scale, people. We need to go to a break. When we come back, Peter, Peter Holland's Holland. here. Peter Holland. Another Peter. Us how to do our job properly, hopefully. We'll see you after this <laughs> short break here on Wake Up WA. <laughs>